And welcome back. Israel is laying the groundwork to follow the U.S. and withdraw from UNESCO, the United Nations Cultural and Educational Agency, because of its alleged anti-Israel bias. The U.S. this week said that they are getting out of UNESCO by the end of next year because of that continuing bias. Israel says the plans to withdraw from the organization are not immediate. They are reviewing them now, but laying the groundwork. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the American decision was brave and moral. And he also said that UNESCO no longer preserves and teaches history, but instead is the theater of the absurd and distorts the facts. Now, to break down the, what happened with the U.S. and Israel's next moves, I'm joined here in our studio by diplomatic correspondent Ellie Hochenberg, as well uh, as Matthew Brodsky with the Security Studies Group in Washington, D.C. Thanks so much for being with us. Ellie, let me start with you, because you know, uh, you're tracking the political reaction to all of this. One big question that's out there, Prime Minister Netanyahu says the American move was brave, it was moral to announce, to withdraw. Why doesn't Israel follow suit immediately, a powerful, like, one, two, punch. That's a fantastic question and while most Israeli leaders are both ecstatic and urging the Prime Minister to follow suit immediately, the reason is in the small words, as always. And that is that, as you've mentioned, the U.S. withdrawal will not be completed today nor tomorrow, but by the end of 2018. Not even this year. Exactly. What is what can happen, perhaps unlikely, but can happen, that UNESCO will change its ways. In that case, the bid to withdraw could be uh, either halted or nixed altogether. And Israel is not willing to be the one to leave the court while the ball is still rolling. So for the time being, Israel is keeping its temper down and preparing uh, to withdraw, not yet withdrawing. Let me bring Matthew into this conversation. Matthew, you know, the, lead, the front runner, let's say, for the next director general comes from Qatar. Arab nations really making a push for leadership roles in UNESCO and other UN agencies. Agencies, you know, what are the, the, the kind of the cost benefit analysis to Israel withdrawing, trying to get out of these committees and versus staying in and trying to affect change and raise awareness from within? Yeah, I, I don't I don't know that that Israel being in or out makes a difference. I mean, it's unfortunate, but no one listens to Israel, especially at the United Nations. Is it, that that's a problem? I mean, I, look, the fact that Qatar is even a finalist is absolutely ridiculous. They're of course uh, been hosting Hamas, uh, big boosters of the Muslim Brotherhood. I mean, we don't need to go through their entire record. They're in the middle of a cold war with the rest of the Arab world, which has been rocked by uh, you know protests and revolution. So probably the last place on earth, earth you'd want to turn to find a leader would be the Arab world. The only place that's really doing a good job of protecting sites is, of course, Israel. And, uh, you know, to get a fair shake at the U.N., that just doesn't seem like it's going to happen. For the U.S. to leave, okay, that makes sense. That makes more of a statement. They've stopped having a vote there. And, and it, oh, there's a reason, another reason aside from the whole anti-Israel bias, which is very important. The other one is that they've uh, the Trump administration is cutting back on funding for the State Department and funding on a lot of programs. So it's a no-brainer if you look at the State Department and say, UNESCO, that's on the chopping block. Now, the U.S. doesn't vote anymore. They owe, they owe hundreds of millions of dollars to this, but they said they want to remain engaged as a non-member observer state. What does that mean, do you think? Will they really have any influence in UNESCO moving forward now? Yeah, think of it this way. Uh, you know how the U.S. doesn't have diplomatic relationships with, uh, with Iran, but through Sweden, they kind of get messages to and from each other, but they're not officially speaking. So the same way here, the U.S. will speak with friendly countries and uh, will put forward its positions, as I think it should do. It's a largely symbolic move, smart financially for the U.S. to step out, but they'll still be able to get their viewpoints across in much the same way Israel wouldn't be able to do what the U.S. is doing from the sideline. But Israel most certainly has a direct line to the United States when it's doing its part from the sideline. And I think that's the best approach. All right. And Ellie, obviously now that America announced its intention to withdraw, it becomes a political issue here in Israel. Many politicians, even government ministers saying, Netanyahu, you should follow, through, follow suit. We need to withdraw as well. But there are a lot of... You know, as, as angry as Israel is, perhaps that you passed UNESCO resolutions yeah. and their wording of resolutions, it's a big risk, perhaps, as you mentioned, 
to announce withdrawal. Well, there is there is a long stand, standing debate here in Jerusalem on whether, in principle, Israel should be part of such uh, uh, so-called hostile organizations and try to again invest an efforts in changing them from within, or simply drop out and say we're not we, we do not want any business uh, with you. And there's no clear-cut answer to that. With that said, the U.S. Uh, uh, declaration uh, means a lot and sends a very clear message to the U.N. as a whole and its many different branches. First and foremost, the UN Human Rights Council, another very problematic body from the perspective of Israel, that if they don't change their ways, there might be uh, some repercussions. And even though the resolutions often, if not always, doesn't have uh, um, um, uh, real influence in concrete terms on the ground, they do contribute to the overall diplomatic discourse and to this anti-Israeli sentiment. So again, the declaration goes the extra mile when we're talking about discourse, when we're talking about concrete concrete terms, again, there are no clear-cut answers. I mean, largely symbolic, but when you're hearing the wording of these resolutions and these holy sites in Israel and in the West Bank you know, that are very important to multiple faiths to hear the Jewish connection cut out, I mean, it, it means a lot for Israel, even on a, symbolic, on a symbolic level, to know that the wording is written like that. Absolutely, and this is why Israel is fighting over the wording of every single resolution uh, to its very uh, last breath. Uh, but unfortunately, there are, there are you know, uh, certain voting patterns that are simply uh, going against the Israeli rationale, whether it's right or wrong. So again, the American declaration uh, uh, really means a whole lot when we're talking about the diplomatic discourse with that said, both Trump and Netanyahu talked about the potential the world body has, but uh, uh, now see, this move change. somewhat undermines yeah. its potential. So interesting times in politics and diplomacy, definitely. Matthew, let me give you the last word. Uh, word. Is UNESCO still relevant to create it back in the mid-40s? It's now such a politicized agency with so many dictatorships and known human rights abusers that are participating. I mean, what's the point of it now? Right. I mean, that's a good point. Just to look from 2009 to 2014, 46, 46 resolutions against Israel, zero against Syria, zero against North Korea or Sudan. I mean, that's all you need to know. Um, to your larger point, though, UNESCO does do some really good things for sites in um, underdeveloped countries. So it does have an important mission, even though it gets abused. So I would say to someone arguing that it's a wonderful place is to truthfully argue that Saddam Hussein in Iraq really kept the electricity going. But that's clearly not the whole story, you know, and a reason that one would, would, would give praise. Yeah. It, it's relevant. But, Certainly you know. something to keep keep our eyes on as this story moves forward. We'll see what Israel does. Matthew Brodsky joining us in D.C. Thank you so much. Ellie as well. Thanks for your analysis. And still ahead on this update. In just a matter of days, PA, Palestinian Authority Police leave the West Bank and will move to Gaza.